you have a view? Which of God? This? I haven't read the book. Which God? Which, the the God, God, God any, 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 any kind of any, either any a creating kind. one uh, or a supervising one, and certainly an intervening one. I mean, I think uh, I think that's very exhaustive. Hmm. My, my view had always been that since we have to live with uncertainty, only those who are certain leave the room before the discussion can become adult. Mm. Victor Stengel seems to think now we've got to the stage where we can say with reasonable confidence there's, it's, it's disproved, not as not vindicated or a um, or better explanation proposed. But I just mm -hmm. thought it would be an interesting proposition because it matters a lot to me yeah. that um, our, our opinions are, con are congruent with uncertainty. Right. Well, well I think the way And in other words, with doubt. Yeah, I, I, I was a big fan of his book and actually uh, blurbed it, but um, I think the weakest link is the, this foundational claim on the texts, the, this idea that the, we know that the Bible is the perfect word of an omniscient deity, because that, that, is, a, that is an especially weak claim, and it really is the claim, it is really the, the, the gold in their, their epistemological gold standard. I mean, it all rests on, on that, that. If the Bible is not a magic book, Christianity, in this case, evaporates. If the Quran is not the, a magic book, Islam evaporates. And when you look at the books and ask yourself, is there the slightest shred of evidence that this is the product of omniscience? Is there a single sentence in here that could not have been uttered by a person for whom a wheelbarrow would have been you know, emergent technology? You have to say, no. I mean, it's just, there's not, if the Bible had an account of DNA and electricity and other yeah, things yeah. that would astonish us, yeah. Then okay, our yeah. jaws drop uh, suitably, and we have to yeah. to have a, a, a sensible conversation about the source of this. Knowledge. You know, Dinesh D'Souza makes this claim in his new book. He's going to be, I, by the way, one of the much more uh, literate and well-read and educated uh, of our antagonists. Uh, hmm. I'm going to be debating soon. He says that in Genesis, when which people used to mock, they said, "Let there be light," and then only a few staves later, you get the sun and the moon and the stars. Right. How how could that be? Well, that's yeah. actually, according to the Big Bang, that would be right. Yeah, but that's... The bang pathetic. precedes the galaxies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, believe me, I expect that <laughs> right. too. But, um, right. Well, I try to demonstrate <clears throat> but, this, this, this cast of mind in, I think, a very long end note in the end of faith where I say any text can be read. Well, with the eyes of faith, you can make magical prescience out of any text. So I, I literally walked into a bookstore, it, the cookbook aisle of a bookstore, randomly opened a cookbook, found a, a recipe for wok, wok, I think it was wok sheer, uh, seared shrimp with ogo relish or something, and then came up with a mystical interpretation of the recipe. And you can do it. I mean, you can connect, play connect the dots with any mm. crazy mm. text well, Michael and find Schirmer, wisdom in it. Michael Schirmer did it with the Bible code. Right, I haven't seen yeah, that. The hidden yeah. messages in the, in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very yeah. good. You, you can absolutely, you can write yesterday's headlines yeah. from it right. any time you like. Yeah. I, I have a question for the three of you. Is there any argument for faith, any challenge to your atheism that has given you pause, that has sent you back on your heels where you felt you're, you didn't have a ready answer, etc.? I actually, I actually can't think of any. I mean, I think the closest yeah, is, yeah. The, is the idea that the, uh, the fundamental constants of the universe are too good to be true. And yeah. uh, that uh, that does seem to me to need some kind of explanation if it's true. I think, I mean, Victor Stenger doesn't think it is true, but, but many physicists do. I don't think, I mean, it certainly doesn't in any way suggest to me a creative intelligence because you're still left with the problem of explaining where that came from. Right. Um, yes. And uh, a creative intelligence who's sufficiently creative and intelligent enough to fine-tune the constants of the universe to give rise to us has got to be a lot more fine-tuned himself. than. Yeah, than why, why create all the other planets in our solar system dead. Well, that's a separate question. Yeah, say, well, if it was that good. Yeah. I mean, yes. uh, yeah. uh, Bishop Montefiore was very good at this, was a, was a former friend of mine, say that you have to marvel at the conditions of life and the knife edge on which they are. So it is a knife edge, yes. Our planet is a lot of it too hot or too cold. Right now, sort of climate. Uh, the other, the other planets are yeah. completely too hot or too cold to support. I mean, that's just one solar system, mm -hmm. the only one we know about where there is life. Not much of a designer. And of course, you can't get out of the infinite regress. But I no, I, I've not come across a single persuasive argument of that kind. But I wouldn't have expected to, because as I realized when I thought one evening, they never come up with anything new. Well, why would they? Their arguments are very old by definition. 
and they were all evolved when we knew very, very little about the natural order. The only argument that I find at all attractive, and this is for faith, you asked as well as for yeah. theism, is what I, would, I guess, suppose I'd call the apotropaic, the, when people say uh, all the praise belongs to God for this, um, he's to be thanked for all this. It is, that is actually a, a form of modesty. Hmm. It's a superstitious one, that's why I say apotropaic, but right. it's, 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 a, it's avoiding hubris. It's also for that reason, obviously pre-monotheistic, but um, religion does or can help people to avoid hubris, I think, mm. morally, yeah. and intellectually, and I, um, that, that might be a... But that's not an argument that it's true. Oh, for heaven's sake. No, there aren't, there are and cannot be any such arguments, I think. Well, maybe I should broaden this well, question. No, no, wait a minute. Um, I think... Ah. Before well, you answer, Dan, I, want, I, want, I can give you several, several uh, discoveries which would shape my faith let right, me, right to no, the no, ground. But let, let me just broaden the question. Yeah, yeah. Not only... Rabbits uh, in the Precambrian. No, no, no. That's <laughs> no, no, no. The, not only a, uh, an no. argument for the plausibility of religious belief, but an argument that suggests that what we're up to, criticizing faith, is a bad thing. Oh, that's faith. much easier. So we shouldn't be doing So yeah. let's, let's, let's oh, exclude okay, that. Yeah. By all means. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. We shouldn't be doing what we're doing. That, that, that's, that's, that's much easier. Okay. What's, it's easier to think of a... Oh, I mean, it's, somebody could come up with an argument that says that the, that the world is a better place oh, and everybody that, yeah. believes a falsehood. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. um, is there any context, though, in your work or in dialogue with your critics where you feel that that argument has, has given you pause? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, uh, not so much in Breaking the Spell, but when I was working on my book on free will, uh, Freedom Evolves, mm -hmm. I kept running into critics who who were basically expressing something very close to a religious view, namely, look, shh, 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 free will is such an important idea. If we gave up the idea of free will, we would have, people would lose a sense of responsibility and we would have chaos. And you really don't want to uh, look too closely. Just avert your eyes. Do not look too closely at this issue of free will and determinism. And I thought about that in explicitly in the uh, environmental impact category. Okay. Could I imagine that my uh, irrepressible curiosity could lead me to articulate something, true or false, dangerous. which would have such devastating effects on the world that I, that, that I should just shut up and change the subject? Right. And I think that's a good question that we all should ask. Yeah, it's good. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time... Uh, thinking hard about that, and I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have published either of those two books if I hadn't come to the conclusion that it was, it was not only, as it were, environmentally safe to proceed this way, but obligatory. Mm. But, but I think you should ask that question. I do. Right. Before publishing a book, but not before deciding for yourself, do I think that this is true or not? Uh, you, you, one, one should never do what some politically motivated often critics do, which is to say, this is so politically obnoxious that it cannot be true, oh, yeah. and which is a different, a different, a different thing entirely. Yeah. No, no. No, it would be like discovering that you thought that the bell curve yeah. on yeah. Uh, white and black intelligence was a correct interpretation of IP. Yes, and you could well suppress you see, find, you find, you see, I, Now I've looked at all this stuff again, I'm absolutely, so you could say, now what am I going to do? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Fortunately, these questions don't in fact present themselves in that way. I'll tell you one place where it's, it's uh, presented itself to me. This, uh, I think it was an op-ed in the LA Times, I could be mistaken, but someone argued that the reason why the Muslim population in the U.S. is not radicalized the way it is in, in Western Europe is largely the result of the fact that we honor faith so much in our discourse that they have not become, the community has not become as insular and as, and as uh, 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 grievance-ridden as it as has in Western, it, Europe. As Western Europe. Now, I don't know no. if this is true, but if it were true, hmm. that gave me a moment's pause. It, that would be of interest. James Wolfenson, yeah. of the, later the World Bank, recently the negotiator on Gaza, hmm. says that he firmly believes that he had a tremendous influence for good with the Muslim Brotherhood in Hamas because he was an Orthodox Jew. Hmm. If so, I think it would be disgusting, I have to right. say. 
and he shouldn't have had the job in the first place. Because the, we know one absolute thing for certain about that conflict, which is that it's been made infinitely worse by the monarchy. By, yeah, yeah. If it were only a national and territorial dispute, it would have been solved by now. So, but his self-satisfaction in saying so, um, even if it were true, uh, would turn me even more against him. 